Good morning. Oh my, the things you see when you look out in the congregation. Good morning, Mr. Surface. Uh, it is good to have you guys here along with uh, those from First Church. They are still without on the west side without uh, gas. And if you haven't driven over there, don't try because the roads are blocked in all kinds of directions. And there are holes on every corner. It looks like a war zone. It really does. So pray for those over there who are still without uh, gas and, uh, that the, and pray for the workers as they are uh, working tirelessly to do their very best in uh, getting things restored as quickly as possible. So we do welcome you. Just a reminder of a couple of things that I'm going to ask uh, Joan and Belinda to come up. That uh, one thing is that we need volunteers for the coat and the chili drive. Uh, that's coming up. We're working with the West Side Gathering in uh, doing that. It'll be, I believe, at the old Save-A-Lot is what the plans are. So we need some lightly used coats of all sizes. You can drop those off here at the church. We need some people to make some chili and also to work on uh, the uh, 2nd of December, 12 o'clock to, to 3 o'clock. If Joan and Belinda will come, we're going to... Uh, uh, give you some uh, exciting news. Wouldn't you like to have some exciting news? Sure, yeah, yeah. Some of you are awake. But let me just uh, say, let me just say that uh, this afternoon, uh, there are several in the kitchen right now preparing meals for uh, the uh, gas company workers. Uh, a sub meal and uh, following the service they're going down to the first church parking lot and yesterday first church fed um, uh, 400 hot dogs or 200 meals to the workers that are there on the west side and they were most appreciative so we uh, we are so proud of of that accomplishment and so uh, Robin and her crew are putting um, sandwiches together and uh, they're going to have those ready to distribute at the First Church parking lot. You probably want to park uh, on the street or at least check out. It'll be uh, at the Grant Avenue side. That's where the parking lot is. Uh, but we've also been able to allow the uh, gas company to park their vehicles and supplies under our covered parking area. And it's been a blessing that they don't have to keep running back and forth so much. So uh, God uses us in uh, many different ways, and we are, we are blessed in that as well. So give an ear. Turn it this way. Uh, to uh, our uh, NDI chairman, Belinda, and uh, Joan are sharing a new adventure that's going to be starting soon. Thank you. Okay, so exciting things are happening here at Elk River, like Pastor Randy just mentioned. As the NDI chairman, I'm tasked with helping cast a vision for youth ministry. Um, when I took this role, I was really excited about working with the council um, to think of ideas to bring more people into the church. Uh, we have a lot of great programs now um, that bring a lot of kids and families onto our parking lot. Good News Sunday is huge. We have a few hundred people that come for that. We just had our pumpkin patch party with close to 100 kids that came through our doors. Um, the next thing that we're challenged with is actually, we got them in the doors, but now we need to keep them in the doors and get them here every Sunday. Um, so Pastor Randy cast a vision for our church over, over the past month. And I'm thankful for that vision and the opportunity to help see that this church is around in the next 80 years and keep spreading the gospel. Um, and right now that really hits home because the church that I grew up in just recently closed its doors. So they didn't have that vision and didn't bring more kids into the church. And I, I just really went, to, I, don't, I don't want to see that happen to this church. Um, so I think it's a big responsibility on our part to attract and bring more kids in. Um, so Joan came to me and she um, sent me some material on a, 
children's ministry and said, hey, take a look at this. And I was like, well, this is, this is perfect. This is exactly what we need. And uh, so she and I met, and we met at a couple of different programs and went through, went through a few different, like three different clubs to decide which one would work best for us. Um, so we landed on the Awanas, and uh, Jones had some experience with the Awanas, and my kids have gone through the Awanas and loved it and everything, so I think this is going to be a great addition to our church. Um, we're going to watch a short little video, and then Joan's going to share with you a little bit more about the program and what all we need. So usually when I start off my story, I start off by talking about my dad because he was a country singer when I was growing up and he was looking to sign with one of the biggest record labels at the time in country music, uh, but he didn't because he was an alcoholic and his heart swelled to alcohol poisoning. Uh, he thought he was going to die, had to go into an emergency surgery, and what he thought was his deathbed, he cried out to God to save uh, save him not only physically but spiritually and God saved him both ways and so he came out of that and immediately was telling our family we've got to start going to church uh, one Wednesday night we came across this small church uh, in Chattanooga and uh, they had a kids ministry there I, I knew nothing about it but I knew I enjoyed it and uh, I loved the one I was always competitive so I loved the games and the scripture memory too and there was one night I was really frustrated because it seemed like all these kids knew John 3.16, but I didn't. And so my leader took notice of that and said, Hunter, it's hard to memorize something when you don't know who it's about. And so she took me aside and explained the gospel to me through John 3.16 about who Jesus is and why he came and why we need him as Savior. She explained in a way that I understood, and I'll never forget her. Her name is Miss Jewel, and Miss Jewel led me to Christ that night as a Sparky in Awana, and it took off from there. I was hungry. I was growing, and I was so involved. My parents took notice of it and said, we've got to get involved, so they became volunteers in Awana, and we literally were discipled together through the ministry because none of us were really church people. And so as I'm learning, they're learning with me. And before long, they went from being uh, minimal volunteers to uh, directors and commanders and uh, were very involved in Awana. And long story short, my dad is a pastor now. And so we are so thankful for the ministry of Awana and how it developed us. So I'm excited because God has called me to be an Awana missionary for Central and Southeast Tennessee. And it's beautiful that I get to pour into a ministry that God used to pour into me. So see, what, what you do as Awana leaders, it's not wasted. I was a crazy hyper kid all over the place, but leaders stuck with me. They cared for me, they loved me, and they pointed me to Jesus. So every effort you make, any opportunity you have with a child is never wasted. God will use it to change a life. So when you donate to Awana, when you give to Awana, when you serve in Awana, you're pouring into stories like mine, where you have people, where you have kids who come to know Jesus and become resilient disciples. So I, I, I urge you, I plead with you, uh, give to this ministry, serve in this ministry, because you never know the change it can make and what type of disciple is being made through it. So, um, I'm very excited about this program, obviously, and just a little quick note, when I was um, like a fifth or sixth grade student, I went through this program, and then I kind of aged out. It stopped at uh, junior high, and so I actually stopped going to church after that um, for a good while, and then later came back in as an Awana uh, helper um, at age 16. And I stayed in it, and I worked in Awana for about 15 years until our um, church went to a different program. But Awana is just a great, great program for kids. It made a difference in my life, and I would not be the person that I am today if I had not gotten into that program. It's so heavy in scripture memorization, and those verses that I memorized as an 11- and 12-year-old child they stay with me to, even now. 
And when I'm going through a tough time or something is going on in life that's, that's stressful or I need the, God's direction, it's amazing how he'll bring those verses right to my mind and the peace that comes over me is just, you can't um, compare that to anything. It's so wonderful. Um, just to let you know what Awana is, it's a global, uh, nonprofit, non-denominational ministry. It's committed to um, the belief that the greatest impact for Christ starts with kids who know, love, and serve the Lord. And the main focus is making um, sure that these children, when they walk in the door, they get presented the gospel. It's um, the gospels woven through all of the all the um, teaching materials. It's woven through their handbooks. When they leave, they know the gospel of Christ, and there's no doubt about it. the The gospels presented clearly and completely and often. Um, those kids um, definitely will have life changing experiences, and I'm really excited to see who God's going to bring through our doors. Our Wednesday night ministry. For children, um, we used to have a lot before COVID, and it took a toll. And Wednesday night actually started falling under NDI. Um, so I think the most that we have right now on Wednesdays is five children. And most of the time, we only have one. And it breaks my heart. And I really want to hear these hallways full of little feet running here and there. And I want to know that those hearts are hearing about Jesus. Awana comes from uh, 2 Timothy 2.15. It means approved workmen are not ashamed and um, of the gospel of Christ. One more little thing I wanted to share. Um, Awana's motto is belong, believe, and become the church of 2050. And I added that up onto my age. I told Belinda this morning. Uh, the church of 2050, I will be 79 years old. That's, you know, getting up there. And Brooke, my daughter, would be 50 years old. I want this church to be here when I'm 79 years old. And I want children to grow up to be adults who are faithfully serving the Lord and seeing the Lord work in their lives and through their families. Um, we we want to let that legacy that started here to continue. So if you would like to get involved in this ministry, it will change your life. It changed mine. I know, and I'm really 100% confident it's going to change yours. So if you're interested in being a part, it will be on Wednesday nights. Um, let me know, and we'll put you to work. Thank you. And just real quick, there's uh, everybody in this church can be involved in this. Um, number one, I need everybody praying for this. Um, we've got to work quick. We're going to start this in January, so we've got a lot to get in place. We've got uh, a lot of volunteers to train, and we need to recruit more volunteers. Um, and I'd love to see some men in this, too. There's going to be a lot of kids who need some male role, male role models in their lives. Um, so this is open to men as well. And then also, if you'd like to sponsor a child, um, this is going to cost, you know, this program is going to cost a lot of money, but it's well worth it, well worth the investment. Um, so we're looking at about $40 per kid. So even if you want to participate in that way, we would, we'd love it. Um, again, November 29th is when we're going to have our informational meeting. That's going to be on a Wednesday evening, uh, right after our dinner. Um, we're going to have um, the Wana missionaries, um, Gary and Chris Wood. They'll be here to join us and tell us more about the program and then the roles that you can serve. Um, so come on out. Thanks, guys. Thank you, ladies. And uh, thank you for uh, responding to a vision. You see, it's all about us being obedient and doing what the Lord is uh, calling us to do. And what better way than to invest in our children? Now, I'll do the uh, television commercial. For, all, for less than one dollar a day. <laughs> um, or one dollar a week. Even, that's even better. One dollar a week. Um, you can uh, help fund that. And of course, uh, we want to do, do our best to get the word of God in the hearts of children. 
They get it on Sunday mornings, 15, sometimes 20, in our children's church, and they get the Word of God, um, but we want it to be discipled consistently in their lives. It's a great outreach program to our community. So uh, let's just pray that the Lord will open the doors. And again, you can talk to Belinda or, or Joan about it. It's sort of, uh, they earn badges and they have a uniform and uh, lots of things, lots of places. You say, well, I don't want to teach. Well, there's a place for games. There's a place to uh, help with the workbooks. There's a place for everyone. So take advantage and uh, do your part in ministry. I um, just got a text from Dave Jordan, and uh, he said that the uh, gas is to the meter at First Church. So uh, we praise the Lord for that. It's going to take a while to get everything completely checked out, but uh, at least we have gas to the meter. Let's stand together and let's worship. When I'm at my end, you're just getting started. When I hit a wall, you just walk through. When I face a mountain, you are the maker. So it's gotta move. Let's praise him this morning. When I'm out of faith, you are still faithful. When I'm at the worst, you are still good. In all of my questions, you are the answer. It all points to you. For the God of the breakthrough, when I'm breaking down, you'll be working a way through. When there's no way out, there's one thing I know, you're still on your throne. So whatever I'm feeling, still got a reason to praise, praise, praise. And out of our wrongs, we write our story. Out of the cross comes rivers of grace. Out of the grave burst a revival no tomb can contain. You're the God of the breakthrough. When I'm breaking down, you'll be working a way through. When there's no way out, there's one thing I know. You're still on your throne. So whatever I'm feeling, still got a reason to praise. Deserts the paradise, stones just start rolling away. When you come around, my heart starts to beat again. Long stress to breathe you in, souls just erupt into praise. When you come around, dry bones come to life. Deserts the paradise, stones just start rolling away. When you come around, my heart starts to beat again. Long stretch to breathe you in, souls just steer up into praise. For the God of the breakthrough, when I'm breaking down, you'll be working a way through. When there's no way out, just one thing I know, you're still on your throne. So whatever I'm feeling, I've still got a reason to praise.
This thing working? Okay. Anyways, uh, we were invited out to dinner the other night by these two right here, and uh, Bill and Rosa, and it was exciting. And the whole it's a weird story because we were going to go to the trail kitchen and they closed. And uh, the week before we were going to go, we had a time to set up to go, and it was close. We had to go to another place. Lo and behold, now we know why the Lord put us somewhere else. But So we're on the way to, where the heck, where did we eat? Golden Corral. Golden Corral. And uh, so the whole way out there, we're just doing small talk. But then it seems like we sat down over in a quieter area, and then we just talked about Jesus for two hours. And we noticed that the... The gals would kind of pay a little attention when we were talking because we weren't talking quiet. We were talking the way the Holy Spirit would want us to talk. And uh, we got done eating, and I reached for one of my Jesus Loves You cards, and I didn't have any. Those are my, my, my bullets, and I didn't have them anywhere. So I always, I'm always handing them to Bill, and I said, you got a card? And he goes, no, they're in the car. So now we're without bullets. So we go and we tip. We always tip great because I know service industry people are hurting right now. I mean, they can't make ends meet, and... And we've been blessed, so we always tip really good. So Bill has the idea, let's just take a, one of the handkerchiefs and write Jesus loves you on it. So we did that, and when the gal came around, we handed it to her, and she didn't, she didn't realize or even fathom the tip that we gave her. And then when she read that note, um, you could see she just caved. She was about 25 years old. Her name was Sophia. And uh, she goes, there's something about you. You guys are different here. We don't know what it is, but, but we just... Uh, start talking to her about Jesus, and she just sat down, and the whole world went away, and we just got a chance to witness to this gal for I don't know how long, and it was cool because the restaurant kind of cleared out, so we had that whole back room to ourselves, and so uh, we, we circled, we grabbed hands at the table and prayed for her, and as we're done, I look up, and there's another gal that walked over, was behind her, had her hands on her praying, so I thought, this is church, so we got up and uh, went over and prayed with that gal, and her name was Ebony. And uh, what a blessing. Here we were going to go to the trail kitchen, you know, just have a great meal before they close. And the Lord just sent us over to, I call it the choke and puke. But uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm a truck driver. I mean, I used to be so, I mean, that's, yeah. but anyways, what a blessing. And then, and then, and then we, uh, we make, you make promises and you want to keep them. And, and Bill said they didn't have Bibles. He said, I will take you out Bibles. And uh, he can probably bring that part up. But it, uh, he went back out there yesterday. And that's what the Lord wants us to do is just effort every day. And we never know when the Holy Spirit is going to hit us and put somebody in our face. We weren't. You're not. You always want to be ready for that, but we weren't. That gal just sat right down at her table. She didn't care about her job or anything. She just wanted to zero in on Jesus. And we got to just we got to just pray for her and just be with her. And it was it was a glorious time. He won't say nothing. Yeah. 
King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you. Cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. This is more than a promise, it's a command. Be at rest, child of God. You've placed your burden at his feet, your request in his hands, and your faith in his word. You know, Pastor Randy, I have to praise the Lord. He has been faithful. He has been so faithful even this week. Hey, Cora said when I'm breaking down. <laughs> well, I had a breakdown last night. And I asked the Lord to forgive me. I was so worried about being having this stupid hip dislocated. <laughs> And I was just not thinking to, you know me, I'm not patient by any means. And I'm trying to get everything done and doing exercises like I'm supposed to and just trying to do it too much, too quick and pull the muscle. And I thought, oh, I did something bad. I'm sorry. But God is so good and so faithful. He uses so many people and so many things to teach me. I'm so hard-headed. But God is so faithful. He came to me that night as I'm breaking down. And a surgeon called and he's just so calm. I wish I could be like him. And he said, it's all right. You can walk. Yeah, I can walk. Well, you're fine. But my husband is so, I'm so thankful. I'm so blessed. And he prayed with me, and he, he knew I was just feeling bad, and I was just so sorry for just not paying attention, not doing the things I should. And God, God, he only called me, and he, he brought peace to my heart. And I know he's helping me. He's healing me. I'm standing here today, and I know God is helping me. He's just teaching me one more time, girl. Do what you're supposed to. <laughs> and I'm so thankful he doesn't give up on me. And he loves me and I, he is so faithful. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful for Jesus, my Savior, who loves me even when <laughs> I'm not doing all that I should. But he loves me and I'm so thankful. Praise his name. I'll give him glory this morning. <laughs> and praise the Lord. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Absolutely. And He cares about you. And He cares about what you're going through. Liz has asked to be anointed for her friend Chuck. We have prayed for him. He's been in and out of the hospital. And Chuck asked her if she would stand in for him this morning. God's been faithful to him. We don't understand. Okay. We don't understand all that he's gone through. But Chuck, as Kathy said, has remained faithful to serving the Lord, to loving the Lord. And then Dream had just asked, many of you may know that uh, Virginia Evans has been in the hospital this week. And uh, she is on the ventilator, uh, more so from the standpoint that uh, uh, where she has double pneumonia, she was very lethargic and couldn't keep the CPAP on. And uh, she's had some bouts with um, her heart rate. And Dreema has asked that uh, to be anointed for Virginia this morning. We're going to sing this little chorus. And maybe some of you want to come and 
pray with Liz on behalf of Chuck and Drina, on behalf of Virginia Evans, as we lift our hearts and our voices to him, listen to the words that we're singing. I cast all my cares upon you. reaches to where we are. And Father, as we bow in your presence, we seek your face. Father, for many months, Chuck has been battling. And as he has battled, he has kept the faith. When the doctors have given up, you have given him another touch and strength for another day. Today, Lord, we pray your touch upon Chuck as he's there in the hospital. Draw close to him. Help him today. Touch his body. And Lord, we think of our friend Virginia. Lord, she's a quiet one. She's a behind-the-scenes worker. She has been faithful to the church all of her life and to you. And today, Lord, she's found herself in a place that she has no control and we pray, Lord, that you would just draw close to Howard and Jonathan as their concern for Virginia. We pray, Lord, that you would give her a contentment and a peace even in this uh, sedated state. That you would touch her physically, that that pneumonia would begin to heal and clear. Lord, we're just praying for you to restore her. Restore her health today. Thank you, Lord. Give Howard and Jonathan the peace and the strength that they need today. And Lord, we think of Debbie Brown as she's in the hospital facing potential surgery. We pray, Lord, that you would be with her today. Thank you, Lord, for Jerry being able to be with us today. We give you praise as he goes for reports this week. I pray, Lord, that you would be with Kevin Workman as he waits to see what uh, recommendations there are for him. But, Lord, we know that you are the healer, you are the helper. And, Father, I pray that you would be with our daughter Erin this week as she faces surgery. Draw close to her. Thank you, Lord. When we don't know what to do, you're always there. Heal our broken hearts, to bring peace to a troubled soul. Thank you, Lord, for the good reports that we've heard. Your word will go forth wherever we are if we're obedient to you. Lord, I pray that you would help us today to hear your spirit speak. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bless you. 
Seth, would you come for just a moment, please? And guys, would you just stay right here for a moment? You're in trouble. No. <laughs> no. Um, Seth and Dreema were on a preparation uh, trip for the mission trip coming up this summer. And uh, Seth wanted to give a word of testimony, but I want to talk about you all. You don't have to kneel. I know you're old. And <laughs> Costa Rica, I saw many, many hurting people, people that have absolutely nothing to their names. They, and all of their ministers need to work full-time jobs. Every single one of them, many of them need to travel great distances in order to preach to their people. And they have a passion and a fire for the word of the Lord that I have never seen before. And it has filled me with that same fire. And they all they want are these small things. They just want to have a microphone. They just want to have more chairs for their churches. There are children sitting outside of these churches selling their toys so that their families can survive. There are ministers that have heart conditions that can It's just made it really hard on them, everything financially. They don't have the skilled workers. If they had the skilled workers they needed, they'd be able to get these projects done. They don't have that. They don't have the funds. Look at what we have. We have everything we need right here. And they have absolutely nothing. And they have this fire and this passion. And their churches are running out of chairs for people to sit in. They're running out of room for people to worship the Lord. They are growing so quickly that they can't manage things. They have children with special needs that have been tossed out on the streets by their parents and the church has taken them in and they are doing their best to take care of them. They have so many children that are homeless children that can't don't know when their next meal is coming. They only have three dollars a day to feed all these children and that will likely be the only meal that they get that day. It's heartbreaking to me to see what these people are going through. But it gives me passion to see just how strong they are in their faith and just how far they're willing to go to reach out to their communities. Many of them just hardly get the sleep they need to keep going and they are still going after their communities and going after their children. And I feel the Lord has called me to go there when I'm ready. I wanted to stay here. I didn't want to go there. And I asked the Lord, please give me a sign. Please give me a sign. Dreama tapped me on the shoulder and she said, Seth, I don't see very many churches around here to you. And I don't know what else to say but that. Thank you, Seth. Seth, stay here for just a moment. Many of you may have noticed that uh, during our prayer time, several men, not just these three, have made their way to the altar during prayer time. Um, you may be thinking, oh, what in the world? Here's, here's the way of what the devil has us to think. What in the world have they done this week that they have to pray about? Uh, but uh, that's not the case. These men attend the Wednesday men's Bible study, and within their Bible study, they said something similar. Uh, and what Seth said to me before service is, we are like dry bones, but those there are on fire and seeking the Lord no matter what their condition. And these men have uh, asked me if it was possible for them to pray that the Lord would fall upon us with a new fresh anointing. And uh, anytime during our prayer time, that's, you can come and, and pray. You can pray anytime, but they have specifically said, we want to pray for the church and for souls to be saved. And uh, I believe that's the same passion that uh, Seth saw and Dream us all there. Because in those countries, it's not about being comfortable once they've found Jesus. It's about we've got to tell everybody we can to know this same Jesus. And that's what these guys did in the Golden Corral. Can you believe that? For Pete's sake, 
Um, I, I, I call it the hog trough, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, you can be a witness anywhere. So, so pay attention. Pay attention to those around you. Be praying that God would see that we would be allowed to see our loved ones saved. And we're going to be talking about the prayer box that's out there for you to put your loved one's name in there that we can pray specifically for their salvation. That's the purpose of the church. Thank you, men. Appreciate it very much. Edna and I have been having a, a little trouble here, there, and yonder. She's had uh, another surgery to correct the surgery that they did wrong to start with. She has all been over and everything, but this surgery here, at least she can stand up straight now. She is uh, going through the house on a walker. So... You won't, may not see her out for a while longer if she don't get out of the house. But I don't wear these sunglasses just to look Joe Cool at 81 years old. I'm not Joe Cool. I wear these sunglasses because I had an accident. In the accident, I can't stand bright lights. I can't stand loud music. I can't stand children screaming. But I came here today, but I want to be here. It's hard for me to be here. The music here is loud. That's, I've had a headache since June the 3rd last year. How do you like to be the man with a headache for uh, over a year and a half or the woman that has to put up with a man that's got a headache Amen. for a year and a half? But... Uh, uh, the doctor wanted to send me to Cleveland Clinic, but uh, uh, then he dropped me because I was going to see another doctor. But <laughs> you know how they are. They don't want that's all your business. But uh, anyway, uh, it is what it is. Uh, God is faithful. I first heard that song right there. I don't know when we do it, Kelly, about 95, somewhere in that area. That's when I joined the choir. And I promised myself, and I don't remember where I promised Carla or not, that I would sing in the choir until I was 70. Well, I went beyond that, but uh, I just... The saying takes all the air out of me. So that's, that's an update on us. But there's a, a man here one time said, we're too quiet in this church. We need to stand up and testify. Testify that God's love is forever for you. It never gets any weaker it only gets stronger. Right. It's going to be stronger as long as there is a God, his love for you. His love for you was long before you was even born. And it'll be his love for you as long after you don't walk this earth anymore. But I just want to thank God for being faithful in my life. I'm not as faithful to him as he is to me. Amen. Bless you, Dean. Yeah, continue to pray for Dean and for Edna. Dean is one of them who uh, uh, comes on the Wednesday morning uh, Bible study. Um, it's a little more quiet than uh, we are in here. But uh, I can't imagine having a headache. Can you? For a year and a half? No. So pray for Dean and pray for Edna. Let's worship one more time together. Do you love him this morning? Oh, your mercy never fails me. 
brightened all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life I have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of Worship him this morning. You have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life. And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after, it's running after me your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. Lord, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. With all my you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Sing that again, all my life All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Lord, we praise you. Can you praise him this morning?
praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He has met with us today already. And aren't you so grateful for his goodness? And he runs after us whenever we seek him. Turn your hearts to Maddie as she comes this morning. As I was trying to find a song this morning, I was having a little bit of trouble, um, and the Lord brought this song to me, and it's just about being thankful in whatever season that we're in, and, you know, even if you're in that season where you can't see God working, and you can't see what he's doing, just to trust and look back and see, you know, what he's done for you in the past, and you can trust in his character and who he is, and know that even if it doesn't look like it's going the right way, that it is. If I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't have doubted you. I wish I could tell my younger self just to have faith. There's so many mountains you have moved, valleys you have led me through. And it's only by your grace I'm standing here today. I'm a witness to your faithfulness in every storm, in every step looking back, never once did you let me go. you thankful that you never have to walk alone, that he is always faithful. Well, as you know, we were gone last week, or you may not know, or you may not care, uh, but we were on a foodcation. Uh, if you have uh, seen uh, Facebook, 
Uh, that's about all the pictures that you saw were uh, of food, and uh, that's okay with me. So I was so fearful when I came home, I waited two days before I stepped on the scales. Now, you might have noticed in one of the posts, I said, I've done all the walking I need to do all the way through 2024 because I don't walk. And um, so I was thankful, you're not going to believe it, lost two pounds. Yeah, yeah, there we go. There we go. It only proves to me, eat everything you see. Uh, so, but uh, thank you for being so gracious to us and those who covered everything last week. And we watched the service. It was a beautiful, beautiful service. But this morning, we've talked about faithfulness. This week is Thanksgiving. And I trust that as you gather with your friends and with your families, that you'll be reminded to stop and be thankful for all that God has blessed you with this day. And we've talked and we've sung about his faithfulness, but right now I want us to look at what is God's idea for the church. Drema and Seth saw the church in action on a foreign field and they have such a, a vibrant style of worship and, and, and Dean may think it's loud here, but listen, without microphones there, it's loud and they worship but I want us to understand and try to reflect on what it is looking at that vision 2030, uh, the vision that uh, Joan and Belinda cast for bringing in more children and discipling. It's not just about, we can have parties, we can have block parties and, and different parties and bring in hundreds of people into our and onto our property and those are valuable times but it's about those that we can have within our church getting the carpet dirty and the walls with handprints on them that's a good thing that's a good thing because once you have those little dirty feet come running through there and, and uh, uh, spilling water or spilling something, it's like, you know, we're, we're screaming, pulling our hair out. But God's plan was for all people to come together and for them to be discipled at all ages, at all ages. I think it is key and I think it is important that we have the word of God in our hearts, especially as children because that's something that we do not forget or we do not lose. I, we, we use this scripture, there's just two verses before. It's a little lengthy, but I want you to follow along in Romans 12, verses one through 21, because I believe this helps us to understand what the church is to be, what the church of today is to be. Beginning with verse one, therefore I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good pleasing and perfect will. If you remember a couple of weeks back, that's the scripture that I used. Now I said, we often search and want to know what God's will is for our life. His will is for us to give ourselves completely to him and allow him to lead and guide our lives, even at the golden corral, allowing us to follow his lead, not our lead. That's God's will for us. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment. In accordance with faith, God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, the church, through many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, 
then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is in giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves, never lacking zeal, but keeping your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed them. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his heads. Do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. That's the church. That's what Paul was writing to us individually on how we are to live, but corporately as a body of believers, that's the church. Sometimes I'm afraid we, we fall short. I'm afraid that we fall short sometimes even as a body of believers and, and many times many churches. There are churches on every corner. Belinda testified to the fact that her home church is closing because it lost its vision, because it lost the hope that was in Christ. Somewhere along the way, we have lost what church is supposed to be about. It's not about the lights. It's not about the music. Church is to be about him. When we enter into this place, it's not about my preference for music. It's not about my preference on where I get to sit. It's not about my preference on the temperature in the room. It's about coming, focusing on, and worshiping the Lord. Satan will use everything within his power to distract us. I've often cautioned us as believers that uh, especially during times of prayer, especially during times of an altar call, uh, don't be digging in your purse, finding that piece of candy to unwrap that cellophane that goes <laughs> when God might be dealing with the person that's sitting next to you and you've been used as a distraction you see, we have to be conscious of what is happening around us and praying, especially in those moments that God's spirit would continue to speak and move and people would be faithful in hearing his word. So the first thing, if we are going to be the church, by the way, this is a two-part message. So next week you have to come back to get the second part. The first thing is, to be a church that understands its purpose, its mission. Understanding why we are here, knowing the importance of why there's a church at 143 Dutch Road. Let me sort of help paint you maybe a little picture. The church exists not for the sake of us, but for those in the world. 
who need to hear about Jesus. The church is the bridge that God built to span the great chasm between God and sinful man. You see, Jesus died in order that we, the church, we, God's people, may be able to show a way to those who need to know that their sins can be forgiven. So as a church, we're not here for ourselves. I think sometimes we get so involved in that that, well, I'm here because I like singing in the choir. Well, I'm here because I like um, my life group and I come to my life group. Well, I'm here because I like sitting beside so-and-so. We're here, first off, to worship him. We're here to become empowered and filled as believers to make a difference in the world in which we live. So we must know our missions. When we think of that mission, here's what the church is supposed to be. We're a doctor to the sick. We just prayed for those. It's a place to come and pray and ask God and seek his healing. We ourselves are letters that the world may read, that they see Jesus. We are to be fishers of men attracting the world to us. It shouldn't be the other way. We shouldn't be attracted to the things of the world. We should fill ourselves enough with Jesus that people want what we have instead of what the world has. The Bible says that we're to be salt. What does salt do? Salt makes you thirsty. So we should be what makes people thirst to know more about this relationship with Jesus that we have. The Bible says that we're to be a light, a light to a dark world. So that means that as we go to our job, as we go to the grocery store, as we go through life each and every day, we don't look like a dried up prune just waiting to pounce on somebody. We go with joy and light. We go intentionally to try to brighten somebody's day with a kind word, with encouragement that they may see not me, but Jesus. We are God's ambassadors to this world, to this earth. We are called. So the truth is, the mission of not telling them to come to us, that's the mission, not telling them, oh, come to my church, come to my church. The mission is us going to where they are and showing Jesus to them. Simple words like, Jesus loves me. Simple words like, may God bless you today. Us getting out of our safe little Bible study life group, the friendships of the people that we have who have it all together and going into places where life gets messy and dangerous. You see, I think that's why it's important that First Church yesterday was out on the streets down there uh, at the church and, and they had fixed hot dogs and, and chili. I mean, it wasn't just here's a hot dog and, and uh, put you a package of ketchup. I mean, they went the whole way. They had the chili and they had the slaw and they had the mustard and the ketchup and whatever was needed. And, and they were doing it right not for their sake, but for those who were weary, tired, and had labored for a week now. And they were trying to give encouragement. And that's what we will do this afternoon in that same location. Try to give a smile, a word of thanks, a word of encouragement 
to let them know that Jesus loves them. You see, we get so tied up in our own little group, our own little family, our own little life group or Bible study, and and we're together, and and buddy, we're doing life together, and that's important. I'm not not, um, saying that that's not an important thing, but we become so wrapped up in us that we lose sight of those who still need to hear. God wants a church that understands its mission. God wants a church that knows how to penetrate the world, the lost world, in the best and most powerful message and in the best and most powerful way that they can get the message of Jesus to every heart, no matter their status, rich or poor. The message is of hope and love and peace. God wants a church that has a holy dissatisfaction with church as usual. Do do you get that? They want a church, God wants a church that is dissatisfied with doing church just the same way that we do it week after week. You know what church as usual is, don't you? It's a church that exists for itself, always does what is best for us when our needs, our desires, our wants dictate what the program is, where everything is built around what we want. Let's fellowship with our people. Committee meetings that are nothing more than social directors for keeping people happy in the church. You see, God desires for us to think outside the box, to be dissatisfied with just my little group coming to church together. He wants to increase. He wants the church to reach and share love and hope and the message of the Lord with all of those. The kind of church it's, it's, of dissatisfaction is sort of like a basketball camp where, where we come together and, and we're all practicing. We're just, uh, every week we get together to practice and every week we get together to prepare and lay out plans for that, that basketball game that we're going to play. But they never play a game. It's every week repeating the same thing. I want a church that didn't just practice, but are going out and doing, playing that game each and every day. Practicing as needed weekly for our own strength and development, but that we are in the game, the mission of the church. Our mission is to go after those people that the devil thinks he owns to make some noise for Jesus wherever we go, to seek the Lord with all our hearts, all that we are, to let Elk River and Charleston First know that Jesus is alive and on his throne. Knowing to our communities, knowing to Charleston, knowing to Kanawha County that Jesus is alive and working. The second thing that I want us to know, first was that we understand the mission, second is that we must be genuine as a church, not church as usual. In the church, many people appear to have it all together all the time. And we put on a great mask and we put on a great face because we gather together But the truth of the matter is that in every home and every family, I believe that is represented here this morning, there's real pain. There are addictions and struggles that are covered under layers of what people think, worried about what someone might say about my family, worried about what it looks like, You see, we all face the same 
difficulties. We don't have it all together all the time. And many times people look at someone sitting across from them and they think, oh, if I only had their life. You don't know the insides of their life and their family and their situations. We need each other and to lift each other up through the struggles. You see, the church is to be a place where real people come to bear their souls, not cover them up. A place where we come together and say, Lord, I, I want you to know that this week's been rough. So, so at family altar time, I'm coming just to say, Lord, refuel me, strengthen me, help me. And it's okay. Where people can be real when things aren't going well. You see, Satan wants us to believe that we will be ridiculed or people will think poorly of us if we admit that we're struggling even in our relationship with the Lord or in life. The church should be a place where we can bear our souls, love each other, pray for each other, and see us through those hard times. The church must be a place where the weakest person could come in and still find love, encouragement, friendship, patience, and prayer Support from God's people. Doesn't matter what you look like. Doesn't matter what you're going through. Doesn't matter what you've faced in life. You're accepted in the body of believers. You're welcome. And we want to help you heal and grow and find that deep love in Jesus. And here's something that I want us to hear. The church is a place where walking to the altar should not be intimidating. An intimidating feeling that, oh, what are they gonna think about me? The altar is a place that we publicly come to say, Lord, I need you. It's a place that we can come when our, when our hearts are, are broken. I remember the Gandhis just a few weeks ago um, LaWanda's heart was broken over, over a relationship with her family. And she knelt here and she wept and prayed. Doesn't always work this way, but that afternoon, her grandson called her. Amen. You see, that's how God works. Satan would say, oh, you don't need to go up there. Oh, you don't need to to publicly go and, and, and talk to the Lord about this situation, you can do it here. But you see, when she knelt here, there were other family, church family members who gathered with her and laid their hands on her and she knew that there were others who were praying with her and for her. The altar is not a place to be afraid of, but rather a humble public confession that they need God and the family of God will respond to their needs by praying with them, by praying for them. This should not be a, a, a forbidden place to us. It should become a familiar place to us. The church, we know our mission, but the church is the one place where we should be loved and valued based on Jesus' love for us, not on anything else. Not on what we wear, not on what we look like, not on how much money we have. But the church should be one place that we enter in and know that the, Jesus loves us more than anything else in this world. So can we be the church that understands our purpose and our mission? Can we be a church that's genuine in reaching and meeting the needs of those around us? When we enter into those front doors, is it a place, are we a place where prejudice ends, where judging ends, 
where name calling, social class, skin colors, popularity ends. When we enter into this sanctuary, it should be a place that income has no influence. Talent does not rule. Our looks, our height, or our weight does not impact how much Jesus loves us. We're to be a church that's reaching the world with a genuine heart of love and concern. I hope that you would pray with me this morning. And as we pray this morning, that we could begin to get a vision of God's idea of what you and the church are to be to our world, are to be to your neighborhood, are to be to the county, to our city, wherever you may work. Can we cast that vision? Can we determine God's idea for the church and live it? Will you allow him to love through you, to speak through you? Somebody, somebody needs your love today. Someone needs his love even today. Would you bow your heads? Kelly's going to sing. We're going to close in prayer. Maybe you're at a place in your life and you say, well, I've been doing the same old thing for a number of years. I do love the Lord with all of my heart. But I need to be more active. I want to see the fire of the Lord fall upon me. I want to see the fire of the Lord and souls being saved here in this congregation. And so, Lord, start with me. Start with me. No matter what the program may be, no matter what the issues may be, Lord, start with me. Help me reach children. Help me reach teenagers. Help me reach adults. Would you be obedient? Find a place of prayer. As Kelly sings this morning. Love through me. See, the vision has to start with us. Seeing people who need Jesus. Speaking. Father, as we close this service, we see the evidence in Scripture there in Romans of what you desire Christians and the church to be to our world. We're 
to love those who hate us. We're to feed those who are hungry, who may even despise us. We're to understand that we cannot embrace evil, but that we bring you to an evil world. Lord, I pray that you would begin your vision in us. I pray, Lord, that we would see on Wednesday evening numbers of children coming and learning scripture and placing it into their hearts of enjoying a time together but Lord it's dependent upon us to be faithful in responding to helping in responding to doing our part I pray Lord that you would help us to see beyond the current of what we have to make us dissatisfied. With church as normal. Help us to reach. Help us to love. Help us to tell. Father, maybe we be a people of prayer praying that you would revive dry bones and that this place may be a place where people are discipled and come to know you as a personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for this blessed day. In your name we pray. Just one reminder, if you can help with distributing this afternoon, please see Robin in the kitchen. Could we stand and receive the benediction of blessing this morning? Hear this benediction out of Ephesians chapter 3. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace.